Hello, welcome to Crying Out Cloud, the podcast that will make you laugh, cry, and reconsider all of your cloud security fears. I'm Eden from the CTO team at Wiz, and I'm here with my amazing co-host Amitai. Hello. From the threat research team, and today our super special guest, Scott Piper. Hi, everyone. He is a cloud security expert extraordinaire. We're very excited he's here. And by day, he is a principal cloud security researcher at Wiz. And on top of that, to top it off, um, he is an organizer for Ford CloudSec, which is super exciting because we get to talk about it today and hear um, firsthand about the conference last week. Are you guys ready? Are you guys excited? Mm -hmm. Both. Yep. Wonderful. Scott, where are you right now? I'm in Salt Lake City, Utah. Cool. Very far from us in Tel Aviv. But anyways, Scott, are you ready? Dive into Ford mm -hmm. CloudSec. All right. Um, you're the like OG Ford CloudSecers, and you're a founder and incredibly influential in the conference. So will you tell our listeners, first of all, who don't know what is Ford CloudSec? Uh, yeah, so let me let me first correct uh, that a little bit that uh, I had been uh, the president for the first two years. We're now in the this was our fourth year. Um, so I stepped down from a lot of my duties. So now now I'm just like a board member. Um, and so it's but but anyways, um, about Ford CloudSec itself, it is a nonprofit um, cloud security conference. And so this was born out of. Uh, some folks, uh, myself included, attending the very first reinforce in 2019, which happened in Boston. And um, it is that conference is a great conference for what it is, but we felt that there were some things missing from it. Um, and so, specifically, that conference is geared more towards highlighting the capabilities and features of AWS. It's their own conference. You know, they they want to be able to talk about uh, their stuff that they have going on. But we felt, you know, there was not a discussion about the limitations of some of those services. Um, and then another big thing is a lot of companies that are running on the cloud are running on multiple clouds. Um, and so a conference put on by a single cloud service provider is not going to discuss the other cloud service providers. <laughs> and some of the some of the strategies and, and you know best practices that you might follow when you are on multiple clouds are going to be different. You know, if you're if you're all in on one cloud provider, you are perhaps more incentivized to make use of more of the capabilities of that single cloud provider. But if you are now running on multiple clouds, now you have the question of, you know, do you do you choose some of the services on one of the providers versus the others in some way? Do you make use of third parties in order to better interconnect and integrate with all those cloud providers? So a whole bunch of different things, uh, different reasons that we felt that there was maybe a need to have our own conference um, and, and a conference that was focused on practitioners. So a conference basically by and for people that were actually securing their own companies in some way. Um, and so, although now I work at a vendor, um, <laughs> Most of the organizers are working for various uh, companies, um, companies that work in healthcare, that work in uh, financial industry. So we have um, a number of people on the organizing committee and then also on the um, the like paper review committee. So when people want to submit talks and, you know, there's a committee that determines, um, you know, which talk should be selected. And so I think... In total, there's, I want to say it was like 18 people um, reviewing all the different talk submissions. So, you know, all across different, you know, different areas of expertise, different industries, um, you know, so we try and make sure there's not like any bias in, in when those talks are submitted. Um, so also like for myself, whenever Wiz submits a talk, like I recuse myself from from uh, reviewing You're that. Biased. So, <laughs> yeah, so I I avoid uh, reviewing it in order to ensure that you know I'm not 
adding bias in some way um, when we decide which talks to be selected. And so everybody on the review committee is asked to do something similar. Like don't select, you know, don't review talks from your own company or from perhaps any company that you feel you might have a bias for, you know? So if you have, you know, or against. A, what's that? <laughs> or against. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like if you, if you have, if there's a competitor, like, you know, for, for the company you work at, that's also a situation in which we don't want you to be reviewing that, um, you know, so that you're not like downvoting them or something. Yeah. Very cool. And okay, so there are all these talks, there's the ones that got selected, but if you had to do like a zoom out, okay, of both what people were submitting and what ended up being, you know, discussed at the conference, what are the trends you're seeing in terms of what's being discussed, what's up and coming, what's kind of catching people's eyes? Um, so, so there were, I think, 216 talks submitted to the conference, of which I think there were like 39 that were selected um, in order to be presented. Amitai, do you see what acceptance rate you got, uh, you got into? What? <laughs> you got in. You got good. in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm. I, I was very surprised, and I was very proud of us. I'm proud of you too. Mm -hmm. Um. There's. There's a number of things taken into consideration when the final talks are selected. So basically, more or less, what happens is we we rank the different talks uh, or rate the talks in terms of you know how much we like them. But then when the talks are actually going to be selected there's considerations about uh, making sure that we have um, talks on a number of different topics as well. So because, for example, um, our, our conference and in general, the industry, uh, especially cloud security, tends to focus a lot on AWS, a lot of the talks submitted are about AWS in some way. Uh, but we want to make sure that we still are highlighting talks from other cloud service providers. So here's like a, a little secret for anybody um, submitting talks is if you submit a talk about a cloud provider that's not AWS, uh, that may do slightly better. Uh, you know, it may have a slightly better chance of being selected um, in the end. Um, so yeah, so so there's that aspect. Pick the aspect most obscure. Even, yeah, you could submit a talk on like Alibaba. Oh, I was gonna say Alibaba. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that, that would probably do well. You heard it here first. You heard it here first. Yep. <laughs> Um, yeah, so there's there's like those types of considerations. Um, just making sure that in general, there's you know a lot of different types of topics being discussed at the conference um, and and topics that are relevant to different groups. Um, so groups that are involved with threat intelligence, groups that are involved with um, doing incident response in some way. We want to make sure that all these different topics are covered. People that are actually, uh, you know, trying to set up and configure um, services in, in the most secure way they can. So a lot of different considerations that go into uh, the talk selections. Um, so yeah, so in general, like what are the themes? We, we try to diversify things enough that there, there aren't really strong themes across it. Um, yeah. So, so I myself was also attending uh, Ford CloudSec. I know, because I wasn't there. Yeah, so you have FOMO. Yeah. yeah. That's okay. And it was in California, so yeah. that was Maybe, a bit but like... You can, a, come you can come next year. Yeah, I know. I'm inviting myself for next year. Okay. Um, Scott, you hear that? I'm coming next year. I'll right. see you there. <laughs> <laughs> Good uh, luck getting tickets. It's, uh, it's tough. They, well, they sell I out quickly. Like, I feel like we're friends, so like you can help me out there. So... <laughs> I can't. I have. I have my Ford CloudSec hat, and I have my Wiz hat, and these. This is separation of church and state. They're they're very different. All right. Yeah. When we bought tickets, we were like, F five. Really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. They they sold out in under two minutes, I think. Um, so this is a lesson learned for the organizers. We need to figure out a something to do differently for the ticket. It's like the ticket master. Process. It's the ticket master scandal of the cloud world. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. People who didn't get tickets were like, what the hell? Bummer. Okay, so for people who weren't there or haven't opened YouTube yet, we're going to give you a TLDR on some of the talks. Yeah. Uh, so it was a really good conference. I had a lot of fun. Um, a lot of really interesting people. It's kind of... Sounds it, like you're like a postcard home. Yeah. This is, that's, that's this podcast for me. Cute. Right? <laughs> um, it's really cool like to meet like all the people like you follow on Twitter 
and like all the people writing blog posts and like you you only know them like you're by real their... you're tall you're short yeah, exactly <laughs> yeah a lot of people are taller than i thought they would be mm. one, one of my favorite uh comments somebody made i think it was last year that they made it and somebody made a similar comment this year though is that it's like watching your twitter feed scroll by in real life <laughs> exactly that's exactly when, it. when you're when you're involved in cloud security it is yeah all, all the different folks that you know you commonly follow uh they're commonly posting things writing things like it's it's a pretty awesome uh, amazing gathering of of yeah experts in the field yeah it's like it's like you have like this really like dense uh like dense as in like the the, the physical characteristic <laughs> not dense as in stupid <laughs> uh, like the, the quality, like the density of, of the people that you that you that you are that you want to talk to in one room is is really high. Um, uh, so anyway, there were a lot of really good talks. Uh, like you mentioned, there were like there were dozens this year. Um, it was like it was two days. Nick Frechette's talk was super interesting. Um, Scott, do you want to tell us a little bit about it? Yeah. So. There has been a kind of known problem that exists with AWS for a while, which is um, they tend to have some undocumented APIs, which can be abused in different ways. Um, one of the simplest ways of abusing them is uh, you can make calls to certain APIs and they won't get logged into CloudTrail. And so this can be helpful for attackers when they want to identify uh, perhaps some of the privileges that may exist or whether or not um, some of the you know access keys that they have, whether or not they're, they're they can actually be used in some way. Um, so so there's those capabilities sometimes though, these which is capabilities, really crazy. That's like actually yeah. crazy that that's possible to just like evade the logging. Yeah, it's it's very frustrating, um, you know, because people think, oh, I turned on CloudTrail. This is my audit log. This is the only audit log that exists on AWS for identifying um, what people or principles within inside the environment are doing. And it doesn't log everything. And so in something that has been known about for for a number of years, so I think it was I think Spencer Geitzen has had originally identified this issue. Um, with with CodeStar a number of years ago, where he identified that there were certain APIs that were available in the web console. So he was able to identify that these APIs existed and he was able to abuse them. And so um, Nick Frechette had, has taken this concept and it, it scaled it essentially. So he basically identified all of the APIs that exist in the web console that don't exist in the, in the SDK. So, and, and he looked through them and it, it's kind of terrifying, like what he found in the sense that there are APIs that are mentioned as being internal only. There are APIs that are mentioned as being like beta or, you know, for testing purposes, like all these APIs that AWS should not be exposing in any way. Like nobody should have any type of public access to these. Um, and yet, and yet they can be called from anywhere. Um, and they are more or less documented if you look at the uh, web console and you were able to analyze the like JavaScript, you're able to understand how to call these different APIs. Um, and so Nick was able to do that. He showed that in a few cases, they're not being logged to CloudTrail. He showed some other problems associated with them. Um, and, but but what's what's kind of terrifying is that for these specific issues he looked into, you know, for a handful of these APIs, he looked at them, he re he identified the problems, he reported it to AWS. You know, AWS fixed those specific issues, but there are still tons and tons of other APIs that exist. And and he he's provided a public GitHub repo. I, I want to say there's like thousands of these APIs um, and he just hasn't had time to look at it. So it's, it's one of those situations um, where I like finding these new vulnerabilities in AWS is, is not, is not at this point, Nick's done all the hard work. So at this point, it's no longer like a matter of, you know, difficulty uh, in order to find these problems. It's just a matter of typing. It's just a matter of like trying them out and, and testing and seeing what happens and reporting them to AWS security and asking them to fix them. Like it's, so it's, it's terrifying, honestly, that. Um... Yeah, like beyond the CloudTrail stuff, like a lot of this stuff is like in beta. 
um, and in all sorts of like strange stages of development, they might have other bugs. Yep. And some of them work, which is also yeah. kind of weird. Like it's not just that they're there; it's that they actually do stuff, <laughs> and they can yep. they can change your environment. Um, yeah. So like I, I think he showed he showed with IM for example that there are certain APIs that uh, the IAM privileges can, you know, deny, allow, thing, you know, do the things that IAM is supposed to do. Um, but there are some APIs that are undocumented, so you may not know that you're supposed to deny these ones as well. And so, and those APIs actually work in order to be able to, um, I think like list access keys was like one of the APIs that, that existed. Um, and so, so yeah, so it's in general, just like a terrifying problem because the, the whole concept of security on, on AWS really comes down to like, you know, understanding I am and your identities and who's allowed to do what. And if it's not documented what APIs exist for who can do what, and those aren't being protected in the same way through I am and also being uh, logged in CloudTrail. So you have an audit log of the, these things like a lot of your foundational security practices break down until AWS does a better job at fixing these things. Luckily, there hasn't been like any, you know, world ending APIs being found yet, but um, but it's still, it's terrifying. World ending APIs. Mm -hmm. The I world will that. end not with a whisper, but with an API. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of like having like cheat codes for AWS that like some people yeah. know about, other, people's, other people don't. And like, yep. like the community is Choose sort of your trying, friends wisely. Yeah. And like, 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 yeah, like you have like secret groups of friends yeah. that are like trying to figure out what the cheat codes do and yeah. they share it amongst themselves. Sometimes they, you know, they tell other people. Um, and the worst thing about it is that since you're like, since it's CloudTrail and you have no other uh, method of logging available because um, uh, the CSP controls the physics, um, like you're entirely dependent on this for, for knowing what's going on in, in your environment. Um, yeah, and it's it's it like it seems like it makes sense that rather than fixing the specific issues that that Nick has been reporting, they would sort of talk about what they might do to to fix this, uh, like looking at the big picture, like making yeah. sure that that stuff like this doesn't happen. Because I think he mentioned that it's not like a static collection of APIs, like more and more are being added every day. It's like it's changing yeah. all the time. So a lot of it seems like a lot of a lot of work to do there. Okay, super interesting. If you want to hear more, YouTube. We yeah. will link this. Everything is on YouTube, and we're gonna we're gonna link we're gonna add links in the description. Yes. So this is super fascinating. And how is AWS responding? So like, let's say someone finds one of these and reports it to AWS. Like, what's the process that you then go through with them? So so. You'll end up, uh, researchers will end up emailing aws-security at amazon.com. Um, I believe that's the, the email for the security team there. Um, they are very responsive. So I think that they have like uh, an internal SLA that you, they have to respond within 24 hours um, of some type of response, you know, to make sure that you know that they received it, that they're investigating it in some way. And then they do a good job of making sure it's routed to the right team, that the issues are resolved. We should send um, them the podcast. Yeah. We should refer them to the podcast and say, <laughs> Minutes, what do you think? Fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. Okay. Another talk that was cool and interesting was Rami McCarthy's talk. Tell us. Share what went down. So this this happened at the same time as Amitai's talk. So Amitai uh, and Marav, um, they also gave a presentation. Choose your favorite person. So I, I so I like I, Scott wasn't in the audience, but I can't blame him because Rami's talk was basically about Scott's work. Yeah, he he mentioned he mentioned my work. So so again, going back to the bias stuff, I did not review his talk because I knew I'd be biased because he mentioned me in the abstract. Um, so so his talk though was about. Um, so he he had mentioned that uh, he was going to talk about other issues beyond 
what I had written about in this uh, document called the AWS Security Maturity Roadmap. I had I'd written this document about how companies should secure themselves on AWS, and um, but Rami Rami went above and beyond and and way more talked about way more things than than what I'd, what I had written about in that document. So what he wrote about, or what he uh, presented was about common problems that he has seen and heard about different um, security teams, cloud security teams, trying to tackle in their environments. Um, and so various various types of issues that he's seen other presentations about, various blog posts about, various open source projects about, where different cloud security teams are trying to solve certain problems. Um, and so he went through those different sets of, of problems and he talked about whether or not you should buy, build, or adopt a solution to these problems. So whether or not you should um, purchase a vendor solution in order to tackle this problem, whether or not you should build it from scratch yourself, or whether or not you should adopt an open source solution that, that already exists on GitHub somewhere. Um, and so... He, he went through these different problems discussing, you know, kind of generally which problems either there, there is, you know, vendor maturity in um, or whether or not the problem is um, kind of specific to certain, uh, you know, certain environments. And so when it is like very, very specific to an environment, that may be a case in which you should be building your own solution just because your environment may be so unique. Uh, but when it is more of a, you know, maybe commodity problem in some way, um, maybe that is something that, that you should lean on vendors for or where there's just, you know, other like issues involved in trying to implement it yourself, um, whether or not it's, you know, just like integration type work or the technical challenges involved, um, some other type of problems as well. So he, he went through some of these different issues. Um, things like secrets management was one. Um, I think uh, just, just various types of uh, things that he's seen a number of cloud security teams tackle. So sort of giving guidelines for like in the face of dilemmas about where to invest your your development, where to invest your money, uh, what yeah. what the best choice for each organization might be. It was a talk yeah. for indecisive people. We're all, we're all <laughs> indecisive though, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, to a certain degree. To a certain degree. Okay. The cloud is full of, of indecision. Yes. And APIs. And APIs. Um, I'm biased. I was not on the consideration committee, but Amitai had a really cool talk that he did with Merav. Thank you. Um, do you want to tell everyone a little bit about what you shared with yeah, the sure. CloudSec community? Yeah, so we had uh, we had a few talks from uh, from Wiz. Um, one from uh, Merav and myself. Uh, we're both on the threat research team. Uh, so we spoke a bit about um, the impact of more classic software vulnerabilities on cloud environments uh, and a bit about how their impact is different than uh, on-premise. Uh, so Merav uh, and myself, uh, we're from the threat research team. Uh, so we spoke a bit about the impact of classic vulnerabilities, like software vulnerabilities with CVEs uh, on cloud environments and sort of comparing and contrasting with the impact they might have on uh, on-premises environments um, because of differences in attacker behavior um, because of differences in customer usage patterns of different types of software in each type of environment, um, and talking a bit about which vulnerabilities matter the most in cloud environments and why they might be a bit different than what you might expect. Um, and all of it was based on our own data about what we're actually seeing uh, when we're scanning uh, cloud environments. Uh, so this gives us a good idea of what vulnerabilities are actually most prevalent, what technologies are most prevalent, um, and it goes back a bit to what we spoke about before, about how because you have a lot of cloud native offerings and you have a lot of SaaS offerings, um, that kind of changes the, uh, the makeup of mm. what is actually installed in environments in the cloud. Um, uh, so yeah, that was sort of, that was what our talk was about. Um, and also Hilai and Nir from the Wiz Vulnerability Research Team, um, they spoke a bit about sort of the behind the scenes of a lot of the vulnerabilities that they reported and, and published uh, over the past year. Just like to add a little context, they find crazy, crazy things yeah. on the internet. And people are always stopping them and asking them, how'd you find this? Oh my God. 
No, but they don't stop them. They tell them they stop do them. more. <laughs> where, where, where they are don't the other stop ones? them. Like stop them in the oh, okay. the, the forward cloud sack, and they're like, in the "Yo, in the streets." Yeah. How'd you find this? So they spoke a bit about um, how they were scanning the internet uh, for exposed cloud resources and some of the challenges that they met uh, when they had to do that. Um, and they were sort of looking for things that might not be supposed to be there. Um, and one of the things we found, for example, Oh my was, God, what are you doing here? What? <laughs> <laughs> They're looking for things that aren't supposed to be oh, there. Oh, okay. I thought that was like what the person who stopped them on the street was like. They were like, what are you doing here? <laughs> oh, you do cloud research. What vulnerabilities have you found? Keep going. <laughs> Pass. <laughs> so anyway, um, so they spoke a bit about how they were scanning the entire internet to find uh, exposed cloud resources, like mm -hmm. beyond just like buckets, but like looking for more sophisticated stuff. Um, and one of the things they found was the Bing Bang vulnerability, which I think we spoke about in episode three. Um, you which, can watch episode three after this if uh, you missed it. Yeah, we'll also put a link to that in the, in the description. Um, so that was a vulnerability that they found just by scanning for um, uh, AA, like Azure AD misconfigurations, and they found uh, basically a panel for managing what Bing displayed to users in response to certain queries. Um, and they showed how they were managed to, to find that and hack it and, and sort of prove that, that this was hackable. Uh, so anyway, it's really interesting. If you're interested in this, this sort of stuff and you want to know how they work behind the scenes, then, then definitely, definitely take a listen. We highly recommend these talks and more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like, I, like if we had a few more hours to this podcast, we could probably cover way more talks. You know, we could just actually go through every single talk and just re reiterate what they yeah. said. That'll be like the uh, <laughs> like the the, uh, the director's cut of yeah. this of this episode. That'd just be us cool. talking about every single <laughs> talk until we can't talk anymore and we faint. Scott, are you in? Uh, I think it'd be better if people just watch the talks on YouTube. <laughs> I think the presenters uh, the presenters did a great job. Um, and and as mentioned, like. The talks are live streamed the day of, and then those live stream videos are kept up um, until the videos are chopped up into the individual talks. So right now, if you go to Forward Cloud Sex YouTube channel, um, you can find these eight hour long videos. Uh, but then in usually it's about two weeks um, from the conference, we'll chop them up, we'll fix some audio related issues that some of the talks end up having uh, and just do some other like minor editing to them um, and put them up as the individual talks. And then if, if you click the director's commentary button, you can hear uh, Eden and myself talking about, about what went on in each of the talks. I'll, I'll ask the other organizers if, if they want to include that. Okay. I'm just I saying, feel like we're, that's how I'm going to get invited to next year. Yeah. That's how I'm going to get my ticket. I'm just going to walk around with a microphone. Yeah, there'll be like <laughs> the, live directors the cloud custom. security track, and then there'll be like the director's commentary track. And For Eden choose. only. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Very exciting. Okay. Um, Scott, thank you so much for joining us. This was really fun. This was amazing. Thank you for having me. Hopefully next time you'll come to Tel Aviv and do it with us in the flesh. Or we'll, awesome, go, awesome. or we'll go Actually, to Salt Lake City. Actually, I want to go to Salt Lake yeah. City. I take that back. Yeah, come out here. Ski season. It's wonderful. Uh, right now, it's uh, getting to fire season where <laughs> there's just fires everywhere and uh, smoke everywhere. But um, Sounds exciting. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's <laughs> pros and cons <laughs> to living out here. We'll be there when the mountains open for ski. Okay. Cool. Anyways, that is all that we have for this episode. Crying Out Cloud, presented by the cloud security company, Wiz. If you enjoyed the show, please be sure to subscribe, give us a rating, and remember, unlike your IAM policies, more stars is better. <laughs>